welcome well good evening good evening good evening this is the minister ml kimball coming to you live this evening and we are going to get into our study i want to thank you guys for all of your support i want to thank you guys for our new subscribers on our youtube channel we are now swelling close to hopefully getting the thirteen thousand subscribers sooner than later but i do thank you all for all of your support uh for viewing our videos liking our videos commenting commenting on our videos, I thank you for all of that. Um, visit us online at www.kns-ministries.org. You can also, if you decide to give us a donation, you can send us a donation by using our cash tag at donate K N S M I N. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Money Prosperity C H, Money Prosperity Channel. Uh, so you can follow and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you are notified anytime I come out with a new uh, video. Well, tonight we are going to continue our study on the study of the commandments. But before we do so, uh, whenever I do decide to do these videos and do these studies, I always make sure that I don't lead off with anything that is in my plans. I don't do this based upon what I want to do. I get into the scripture, I go over my notes, and then I ask the Most High to give me what I need to present today. And so while we're studying the commands like we've been doing, um, the first thing I want to do is deal with what he, what was in my mind today, what he gave me as a thought today. So I want you to, first of all, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, and then I want you to get your Bibles out because the reality of it is we need to look at the scripture. We need to see it with our eyes. Um, I want you to turn to second Chronicles chapter number seven, and I'm going to start at verse number 16. <clears throat> Now he says, for now have I chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. And as for you, if you will walk before me as David, your father walked and do according to all that I have commanded you. And shall guard my statues and my judgment. So he says here to do all that he commanded. So it does not, you, you, this is where we have to stop and ask ourselves, where did anybody come up with this? The law's been done away with, or it, the law's been fulfilled. When he says to do all that I have commanded you. Verse 18 says, then will I establish the throne of your kingdom, according as I have covenanted with David, your father, saying, there shall not fail you a man to be ruler in Israel. But if you turn away, comma, and forsake my statutes and my commandments, which I have set before you and shall go and serve other gods and worship them. Then will I pluck them up by the roots out of my land, which I have given them. And this house, which I have sanctified for my name, will I cast out of my sight and will make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. So his people have become a proverb, a byword. When you call his people or you call the people of the past Native American, that is a proverb. It is a byword. When you call uh, Judah Negro, that is a proverb. It is a byword. And what did the Most High say? He said that if we did not obey, he would cast us into the other nations and we would become a proverb and a byword in those nations. And this house, which is high, shall be an astonishment to everyone that passes by it, so that he shall say, why has Yahuwah done this unto this land and unto his house? And it shall be answered because they forsook Yahuwah of their fathers, which brought them forth out of the land of Egypt and laid hold on other gods and worshiped them and served them. Therefore, has he brought all this evil upon them? 
Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the ascendant smoke offering and the sacrifices and the glory of Yahuwah filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of Yahuwah because the glory of Yahuwah had filled Yahuwah's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of Yahuwah upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshipped and praised Yahuwah, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Then the king and all the people offer sacrifices before Yahuwah. So as we see here, once again, he's still dealing with the importance of obeying his commandments, his statutes, his laws. So no matter who told you or made you believe in this day and age that these laws have been done away with because of the sacrifice on Calvary, then they're going to have to explain to me why in every single book that we read in the Tanakh, he's punishing the children of Israel because of their disobedience. So it gives us an illustration of what we are supposed to do. It gives us an illustration that if we don't obey the Most High in his statutes and commands, there is judgment because of it. They were punished and moved out of the land, which is why the land is filled with imposters today. He said that that land would lie desolate. And instead of it lying desolate, they rebuilt that land. Just like it said in the book where he, he, he said that Esau said, I will go and build uh, my, my house and my nest. I will build my, my, my kingdom in the sky. I will build it. And, 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 and Yahuwah said, I will still tear it down. So although they are in the land, because Isaiah tells us later that this land would be trampled down by the Gentiles until the end. So it's telling you that the people that are inhabiting that land are imposters because as we see here, he said that if they did not obey, he was going to cast them out of the land and then leave that land desolate, which is exactly what he did. This is why the children of Israel have been scattered across the four corners of the earth because they would not obey. So keeping with that, we're going to continue our study on the commandments that we were studying because we are going through these 600 and something nine commandments and we're going to study them out because he said to not only learn, recite the Torah, but he said to teach it to our children. Well, how can you teach something to our children that you won't even study because they convinced you and told you that somehow you don't have to obey these commandments. Somehow you're saved as long as you repent. No, that's not what the Most High said. Because if that was the case, then he would not have given us this many laws and commandments that he expected us to obey. And unless you can show me the scripture where he said, I changed my mind, then I don't want to hear that this doesn't apply anymore. Because that's not what the scripture says. Now, Commandment number 134 says, the slanderer must remain married to his wife. So this separates anybody thinking that you can just divorce for any reason. You must remain married to your wife for any every reason outside of adultery. This is what he expected. Anything outside of that is considered adultery because he said that a man leaves his father and his mother and becomes one with his wife. They shall become one. Let no man put asunder what he has joined together. So if he joins you with your spouse, then don't you tell me that there's something called irreconcilable differences. No, the scripture says you must remain married to your wife. So don't come to me with the scam of why you divorced. It, it, it baffles me the amount of leaders and preachers divorcing and remarrying and divorcing and remarrying. And oh, the most high is with this. And oh, the most high is with that. And oh, first of all, the most high never once decided who you were going to marry. 
The Bible says that he that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from Yahuwah. So that means that he didn't pick your wife. Adam, uh, the Most High did not pick Eve for Adam. The scripture says that Adam saw Eve and said, this is flesh of my bones. So the Most High didn't say that. Adam said that. Adam saw and Adam said that. So the reality is nobody picks your spouse but you, man. And if you pick that spouse, you have a responsibility and a duty, a charge to honor what you promised that person in front of all of their ugly relatives and friends that sat there and witnessed it. You have a charge to keep your vow. There is judgment for not keeping vows. This is another thing, reason they told you it's not important. Because they made you believe that the Most High is okay with you breaking vows. But you stood right there in front of all these people and said you were going to stay together and love this person to death do you part. You just get up and decide the next day that that don't matter anymore. You think he forgot what you promised him? No. So he says, must remain married to his wife. He must not divorce her. Why did he put this command here if it was okay to just write a bill of divorcement? Moses said write a bill of divorcement if you were caught in adultery. He didn't just say because you were sick of her or you tired of her today or you tired of him today or you irritated with her today or she he irritated you today. Uh, he said tomato today, you said tomato tomorrow, and you fighting and now you want a divorce. That's not what the scripture says. Now, if you want to live like the ways of this world and do the things you want to do, that's fine. But the scripture says you must not divorce. Commandment 136 says to take procedures against a suspected adulteress. Again, you all thinking that it's okay to cheat on your spouse. Then why is he pronouncing judgment for adultery? He's not okay with adultery. When you break that vow and you break that covenant. You are committing adultery against the Most High because you not only made that promise to your spouse, but you made that promise to your spouse in the presence of the Most High. So when you break that commitment, you don't just offend your spouse. You also offend the Most High who you sat there and made a commitment to. A jealous husband must take his wife to the priest and not put oil on her meal offering. So again, there was judgment for any spouse that was suspected, caught, or involved in adultery. A suspected wife is to be accompanied by a meal offering that contains no frankincense. See, these are sacrificial. We're getting into the sacrificial part of the commandments, but we still are. I still need to see something that we can't keep because that was the lie that they told you was. Oh, man couldn't keep the law. Well, these commandments that we're going through, most of these commandments can be kept. They just told you that so you wouldn't keep them. 139 says not to have relations with your mother. You should know better. But he says it right here in the commands. Not to have relations with your father's wife. This is why Reuben was, was judged because of what he did with his father's wife. Study it out. Not to have relations with your sister. Not to have relations with your father's wife's daughter, not to have relations with your son's daughter, not to have relations with your daughter, not to have relations with your daughter's daughter, not to marry a woman and her daughter, not to marry a woman and her son's daughter, not to marry a woman and her daughter's daughter. So which one of these commands can't we keep? Not to have relations with your father's sister, not to have relations with your mother's sister, not to have relations with your father's brother's wife, same father, not to have relations with your son's wife, not to have relations with your brother's wife, same father and or mother, not to have relations with your wife's sister, your aunt. A man must not have relations with a beast, bestiality. A woman must not have relations with a beast, bestiality, not to have homosexual relationships, uh, not to have homosexual relationships with your father. Why? Because we know that Ham, which was uh, Noah's uh, 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 youngest son, did something homosexual with his father and got the land of Canaan cursed. 
because of it. You don't believe me? Go to Genesis and read it. The Bible says that when Noah woke up and knew what his son had done to him. So you have to explain to me like I'm a two-year-old, what did he do to him? Why did he know that something had happened? Because when you say he uncovered his nakedness, you're talking about something that is revolved around sexual sexual activity that's what it was in the book so anytime it was about uncovering nakedness that was a uh, way to de to describe sexual activity and so the reality of it is he says not to have homosexual relations with your father's brother not to have relations with a married woman but not to have homosexual relations with your father because this had happened before this had happened before why did he write it if it didn't happen it happened before with Noah, not to have relations with a married woman. Once again, there's judgment for that. You think you're not harming anybody, but you don't understand that you're breaking the commandments and you are transgressing the most high because that woman or that man is already committed to a relationship that they have made a vow in front of the most high and he sealed it. You don't believe me? Go read Malachi chapter number two and read the entire chapter and explain to me why Malachi is dealing with the wife of your youth. Matter of fact, we're going to go there. Not to have relations with a menstrually unclean woman. That means having sexual intercourse with a woman on her menstrual period. You sick and sick scamified scams that are saying it's old matter. You can do whatever you want because you're married. Bull. The scripture says not to do it. Not to marry Gentiles. Not to let a Moabite and Ammonites males marry into the Jewish people. Don't abhor or keep third generation Edomites and Egyptian converts from marrying into the Jewish nation. So he said, as long as they convert it to, to Israel, then you could marry into them. But the reality is there was a lot of different religions, a lot of different idol worship that came from these different nations. And he said, stay away from it because we kept being just like them, just like king solomon fell at the with all of the women that he had because the women turned him away from the most high again he said don't be like the other nations not to abhor or refrain from marrying a third generation edomite or egyptian convert so again once that's going to conclude what we're going to study today on the commandments but again these are pretty clear commandments and somebody has to show me where we can't keep these don't tell me that we can't keep the law that is a scam because every single one of these things we just mentioned and we've been going through this every single day and we're now all the way up to 165 165 com uh, commandments and each and every one of them we can keep but yet they told you oh man couldn't keep it Laws done away with. It was too hard to keep. Why would it be too hard for him to keep? If why would he give us something that was too hard to keep? He wrote it, but yet he told us to keep it, but would give us something that he knew we, we couldn't keep. It doesn't even make sense. But that's what they told you, so they could give you this Jesus, ease in on this Jesus. Oh, he put all my sins on the cross, but you don't realize that while you're sinning today, just because you said I repent. The more you transgress and continue to sin, the more judgment you're bringing upon yourself. And just because you said, I repent, does not mean you are not going to wake up to torment because somebody told you all you got to do is say you repent. Well, if that's the case, why didn't anybody in the Old Testament, the tonight, ever have to just say, I repent? It never once, show me in scripture, you either obeyed and you went to Abraham's bosom or you disobeyed and you woke up to torment. That's it. Goat or sheep. Righteous or sinner. What makes you righteous is not how many tongues you can talk in, not how good you can dance, not how good you can hoop, not how many clothes you can put on and how nice you can look. But what makes you righteous is if you obey his commandments. That is the only thing that separates the righteous from the sinner. It's not about you saying I'm sorry and repenting. Because the truth of the matter is, we've all said, I'm sorry, and continue to do the same thing. I've done it. Now, if you don't want to be honest, fine. You don't have to be honest, but I can be honest. I've told the most high, yeah, I'm sorry. Then I turn around and do it again. I'm sorry. My wife used to tell me that years ago. Eventually, it gets to a place where your sorries don't mean anything. 
there was a, a saying on Seinfeld, uh, one of my favorite shows, Seinfeld, uh, where George says something. Uh, he said, uh, stuff your sorries in a sack, mister. That's the same thing that the Most High is saying to you. You're, you're literally putting sorries in a bag over and over and over again, but constantly doing the same thing and then saying you're saved. No. When you say you're saved, you're saved from being waking up to a, a eternal life of torment. OK, that's what being saved is. And the only way you can be saved from that is by obeying his commandments. That's what he said. Now, I want because I said that about Malachi, I don't like to say things without giving you scripture. So I'm going to go to the book of Malachi and we're going to deal with this before I close this video out. Because I want you all to see this. Because again, no matter what anybody says, we go to Malachi and talk about Malachi all day long when it comes to tithes and offering. Tithes and offering. Every time I've been to a church, anytime I've been to anybody's church, anytime they want to talk about tithes and offering, they pull out the book of Malachi. But they skate past a whole lot of valuable information that was written in Malachi that nobody wants to talk about. So I'm going to start at chapter number two, get your Bible. Verse number one says, and now, O oh, you priests, this commandment is for you. So he's talking to the priests, the preachers, the leaders, the people that call themselves the men and women of the cloth. You who call yourself apostle, bishop, minister, preacher, pastor, leader, any kind. He says, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear. And if you will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, says Yahuwah. So again, don't give me something else. He says his name here. He says, then I will even send a curse upon you and I will curse your blessings. Oh, we talk about blessings, but we don't talk about him cursing the blessings because you can get your blessings cursed by disobeying obeying him. He says, yea, I have cursed them already because you do not lay it to heart. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feast, and one shall take you away with it. And you shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Levites, says Yahuwah. My covenant was with him of life and peace, and I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. The Torah of the truth was in his mouth and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and did not turn and did turn many away from iniquity. So he's talking about Levi, one of the sons. He's explaining why Levi was the priest, why he made Levi the priesthood. He says, because the Torah of the truth was in his mouth. So again, don't tell me you don't need to know the Torah. You don't need to teach it. He wants us to know the Torah. What is the Torah? The first five books of the Bible. So don't tell me your New Testament scam and you don't know anything about the Torah. I would have to put you in an indictment of saying you are a scam. Because if you jumped right away to the New Testament and forgot everything he said in the Torah, then you are a backyard scam. Because how do you skip all the way to something that was written years later after he said, don't turn from the left or the right from this? For the priest's lips shall guard knowledge and they shall seek the Torah at his mouth, you preachers. For he is the messenger of what? Yahuwah. So if you're not preaching a message about Yahuwah and you're not dealing with the Torah, then what are you coming to me with? You're teaching some fluff. You need to sit down because you're a scam. But you are departed out of the way. You have caused many to stumble at the Torah. You've told people that they don't need to keep this law. You've caused them to stumble. You told people that the law has been done with. You caused people to stumble. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, says Yahuwah. Therefore, have I also made you contemptible and base before all the people, according as you have not guarded my ways, but have been partial in the Torah. Have we not all one father? Has not one El created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother by profaning the covenant of our fathers? Judah has dealt treacherously and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah has profaned the holiness of Yahuwah, which he loved and has married the daughters of a strange El. 
Yahuwah will cut off the man that does this, the master and the scholar, out of the tabernacles of Jacob and him that offers an offering unto Yahuwah. And this have you done again, covering the altar of Yahuwah with tears, with weeping, and with crying out so much that he regards not the offering anymore. So he don't even want your money. Don't tell me he accepts all offerings. No, he says, I don't even want it. Or receives it with goodwill at your hands. So you telling me that anybody can just give and give it will come back to you give. No, he don't want your money if you can't follow his commandments. That's the scam that the church tells you because they want your money. They want you to keep giving offerings. They want you to keep coming up with building funds and scamified offerings and love offerings and old blessings and, and seed offerings and all of this scam to put money in somebody else's pocket. But the most I said, I don't even want your offering if you cannot obey me. He says, yet you say wherefore, because Yahuwah has been a witness. Remember I told you earlier when you say them vows to your spouse, he, the most high, sits and becomes a witness. You know what a witness is between you and the woman of your youth against whom you have dealt treacherously. Some translations say you have divorced, yet she is your companion and the woman of your covenant. You made that covenant. So I don't care what the preacher told you. The Most High is not okay with you breaking the covenant because you just feel like it. Preachers and leaders been married once, twice, three, four, five times, and you up there trying to lead somebody. You need to sit down. Your spirit doesn't show any type of stability. Your spirit shows no type of stability whatsoever. How can anybody learn from you? You're a hypocrite. You're a scam. If you can't even sweep around your own front door, how can you lead someone else? It's a shame. Marriage and divorce and divorce, remarried, divorce, remarried, divorce, remarried. This is all we see today. And it's excused. But why didn't he excuse it here? He's saying the woman of your covenant. He says, yet she is your companion. He says, and did not he make one? Yet had he the remnant of the Ruach, the spirit, and we're for one, that he might seek a seed. He wants to see godly children from your union. Therefore, take heed to your spirit and let none deal treacherously divorce against the woman of his youth. So, once again, somebody has to explain to me where he gave the okay if he said that it's not okay. If you can't show me where he said that it is okay for us to do things like we want to do it, then you have to then explain to me. How you're following the same follow or the, the, the same uh, Elohim that I'm following. We ain't serving the same. If you think that you can live this way and his book says you have to live that way, then how are we following the same? You can be mad at me all you want. Don't give me your Jesus. Don't give me your Lord. Don't give me your God. Because he said himself, besides me, there is no other savior. You don't believe me? Let me get that scripture for you. Because again, I don't like telling you nothing that I can't prove. We're gonna, I'm going to show you that in scripture so you can see it with your own eyes. There is no other savior besides me. I want you to see how many times he said that in the scripture. Because some of us don't understand that the most high was clear in the scripture about who he expected us to worship. And for some reason... We have allowed every Tom, Dick, and Harry, every Win Dick uh, doctrine uh, tell us everything else outside of what he said. Now, 2 Samuel 23 and 3 says, The Elohi, Elohi of my rock, in him will I trust. He's my shield and the horn of my Yeshua salvation, my high tower and my refuge, my savior. You save me from violence. That's 2 Samuel. I got some more for you. Second King says, and Yahuwah gave Israel a savior so that they went out from the from under the hand of the Amorites and the children of Israel dwelt in their tents as before time. Isaiah 19 and 20 says, and it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto Yahuwah in the land of Egypt, for they shall cry unto Yahuwah because of the oppressors and he shall send them a savior and a great one and he shall deliver them. Isaiah 43 and 3 says, For I am Yahuwah, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Kiva for you. 
Isaiah 43 and 11 says, I, even I am Yahuwah, and besides me, there is no Savior. I think that's pretty clear. Isaiah 45 and 15 says, truly, you are an ill that hides yourself, O Elohai of Israel, the Savior. Isaiah 45 and 21 says, take you and bring them near. You let them take counsel together who has declared this from ancient time, who has told it from that time, have not I, Yahuwah, and there is no Elohim else besides me, a just El and a Savior. There is none besides me. He's very clear here. So somebody going to have to explain to me where we come with this new stuff. Isaiah 49 and 26 says, and I will feed them that oppress you with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine, and all flesh shall know that I, Yahuwah, am your Savior and your Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. Wait a minute. He says he's the Savior and the Redeemer. So where did this New Testament scam, scam come up? Where did they come up with this? Who said that it would change, and where did he say it was going to change? Show me the scripture. I'm waiting to see it. Six, uh, Isaiah 16 and 16 says, you shall also suck the milk of other nations and shall suck the breasts of kings and you shall know that I, Yahuwah, am your savior and your redeemer. He says it again. Isaiah 63 and 8 says, for he said, surely they are my people, the children that will not lie. So he was their savior. Jeremiah 14 and 8 says, O hope of Israel, the savior thereof in the time of trouble. Why should you be a stranger in the land? And as a wafering man that turns aside to tarry for a night. First Baruch 4 and 22 says, For my hope is in the everlasting, that he will save you, and the joy has come unto me from the Holy One, because of the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting, our Savior. Hosea says, Hosea 13 and 4 says, Yet I am Yahuwah from the land of Egypt, and you shall know no gods but me, for there is no savior besides me. Psalm 106, 21 says, they forgot El their savior, which had done great things in Mitzrayim, Egypt. And this is the nail in the coffin. Wisdom of Solomon 16 and 7 says, For he that turned himself toward it was not saved by the thing that he saw, but by you that are the Savior of all. But this is where it gets crazy, because this is clear as can be, but somehow they erased this out your scripture, because the council on this sea decided to say this book wasn't inspired. Sirach, which is Ecclesiasticus 24 and 24 says, faint not to be strong in Yahuwah that he may confirm you. Cleave unto him, for Yahuwah is Elohim alone. And besides him, there is no other savior. So I need somebody to explain to me why he said this so many times in the Tanakh. But yet we come with this New Testament and today you don't have to obey what he said. That that is where the scam begins, and that is why Christianity is a scam. I know you're upset about that. I know you love your preacher. I know you love your church. But if you don't wake up and smell the coffee beans, you will be lost. I'm not in it for your offering. I'm not in it for your stage. I don't care if you watch me or you don't watch me. My duty is to teach what the Most High expects of us leaders. And I woke up and smelled the coffee, and I didn't sit back and just hold it in. I've built every stage I could and I spend day after day making sure that I come to the most highest people with the words the way he intended for them to be taught. Not the scam that everybody, real preachers can't be popular. Real preachers will not be popular. Matter of fact, they're going to talk about real preachers. It's the scams that's popular. It's the scams that are in the getting it after the ways of this world. The ones that tell you to stand up and repent because the day of Yahoo is coming and stop sinning and to obey his commands. Those are the ones that get called a heretic. I'm the minister, Mel Kimball. Be blessed. Until next time. On purpose.